say you're a lottery commissioner, and you've been given a task to solve two problems. One, you want to confirm that your winners are actual winners, and also that your database and back end can support the number of entries that you may get on a given week. Now, with the nature of a lottery, you may have several million people playing the lottery, and you have several different sources that are writing to your one database. So today, we're gonna to look at the gem Active UUID. And what we're going to do is we're going to create our migrations and we're going to override the ID being created and instead pass in the UUID and set the primary key to true. And then in our model, we'll simply include the active UUID, UUID. If our model is related to another model, then we can call a natural key, which will let the application know this attribute that we are passing through is a UUID and should be treated as such. So the first step is to add the gem active UUID to your gem file. And since I'm not using Postgres, I found that calling this active UUID patches apply in an initializer file helps it work better with different databases like MySQL or SQLite. This is most likely because MySQL and SQLite do not have a native UUID type, whereas Postgres does have one. And then in my migration files, I override the default generator to create the ID, which is normally an integer type. Instead, I'm creating a UUID type, and I'm setting the primary key to true, and similar for the entries where I'm overriding it, and I'm setting the ID but I'm also calling the UUID on the lottery ID since an entry belongs to a lottery and a lottery has many entries. I'd like to show you the seeds file real quick. The seeds file is just a initializing file that's going to generate some sample data or initial data for your application. And here I'm looping through the lottery 10 times. Each lottery will have up to 40,000 entries. So what's happening here is I'm creating the lottery and then once I populate all the data, I'm saving it. From here, I'm creating the entries up to 40,000, and it's calling lottery.entries.new. Because entries belongs to a lottery, and a lottery has many entries, we can do this. Now the problem is going to be with active UUID is if I do not generate the ID for the lottery and the ID for the entries before I save them, so in a callback, then it's going to generate an error that the ID has been duplicated, and since we are dealing with the primary key, that's going to cause the application to fail. So what I had to do was I had to create a concern where I just called it unique ID, and it includes the active UUID, and before create, it populates the UUID. Within each one of my models, I just include the unique ID. Because I'm including the unique ID here in the model, and in the concern, it's extending this to include the active UUID, UUID, then we don't have to add this into our model as well. So back in our application, if we want to look at one of these lotteries, we can click on our show, and then you'll see that we have all of our entries that people have played. Just for purposes of this example, I'm just showing 11 of them. But you'll see here we do have a winner, and it did not create an integer ID, but rather we are using a UUID. So you may be wondering, what's the probability of duplicates? It does depend on how you're generating the UUIDs. However, the perspective that we need to look at is, if the annual risk of a person getting hit by a meteor is 1 in 17 billion, then the equivalent to the odds of creating a few tens of trillions of UUIDs in a year is having one duplicate. So in other words, generating 1 billion IDs every second for the next 100 years, the probability of creating just one duplicate would be about 50%. So if you have a need for multiple master writes, or if you don't want your table locked, due to an auto increment, or if you're dealing with trillions of records, then I suggest looking at active UUID. So one last thing to consider is that the ID will be passed in as a parameter into your URL as you can see up here. So you may want to consider a gem like friendly ID for a bit more SEO friendly parameters in your URL. Well that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching.